Hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here. Welcome to my office in Nashville, Tennessee. I want to do a quick video for you and talk about the top essential oils that act as natural antibiotics. And you know, prescription antibiotics today are wrecking the health of a whole lot of people. And so I want to talk about the best essential oils to use that are sort of nature's anti biotics. And hey, if you believe like food is medicine like I do, and really what nature gave us can sometimes be more effective than these synthetics that the pharmaceutical companies created, do me a favor, help me set, uh, spread this message right now. Take a minute and share the best natural antibiotics that are essential oils specifically. And I'm actually going to touch on a few others that aren't on this list as well. And here's what you need to know. You know, I know that when I was a kid growing up, my mom always brought me into the doctor anytime I had uh, a cold, the flu, croup, you know, bronchitis, any issue, and I always got put on an antibiotic. And when that happens, what it does is typically, it's not only gonna kill the bad bacteria, it's gonna call the good, kill the good bacteria in your gut. You know, doctors and researchers say that 70% of your immune system is located in your gut, in your microbiome. And so what's happening is we're giving kids and doctors are prescribing antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic, what's destroying the good bacteria in the gut, causing leaky gut syndrome and autoimmune disease over time. And these antibiotics are very powerful that a lot of doctors are prescribing today versus what people use throughout history, what they reference in the Bible, what's referenced in Greek medicine, uh, Chinese medicine, they use herbal extracts to treat chronic illness in the body. So here are the top essential oils that are used in antibiotics around the world today. Number one is oil of oregano. Now something unique about oregano is not only is it antibacterial, it's also antifungal, antiparasitic, it fights off yeast as well, um, antiviral. So oregano is powerful at fighting off all forms of pathogens. And oregano contains a really unique compound called carvacol. And carvacol um, is really what makes oregano so powerful. And the unique thing here is that it's actually been shown to fight off MRSA and strep. It's been shown to fight off of um, antibiotic resistant bacteria. So this is something we're happen to, that's happening a lot today as well, is because we're using all of these synthetic antibiotics, is it's actually creating these super bugs that are resistant to certain types of antibiotics that uh, medical doctors are prescribing today. And by the way, if you know what I'm talking about, I'd love to hear from you right now. Things like MRSA, all of the super bugs, these things are growing. And think about how it's gonna threaten, especially our children, our children's children in the future, these super bugs we're creating. It's not good. Well, here's the good news. Oregano has been shown in medical studies to fight MRSA and antibiotic strains of uh, bacteria in in vitro studies. So again, oregano is great. And I wanna mention this too with oregano, you know, my mom at one point had a fungus on her toenail uh, after she went through chemotherapy. And you know, chemotherapy can have a similar result. It really weakens the immune system, allows the body to be overcome with certain types of infections. So my mom had a fungal infection on her toe we started doing oregano oil on it three times a day and after two months it was completely gone. So oregano oil is effective at treating a number of health conditions. It's really a powerful essential oil. Number two here is cinnamon. Cinnamon contains a compound called cinnamaldehyde. And cinnamon within Chinese medicine is also known to help warm the body. So typically think about winter time. We use cinnamon in apple cider. We use cinnamon with uh, you know pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving. Cinnamon is, is used typically when it's getting colder outside. And in Chinese medicine, it's really used to warm the body. So cinnamon is a great herb, but cinnamaldehyde has been shown to be effective for so many things from balancing blood sugar by helping support uh, glucose tolerance factor, that's GTF, to a number of things. But one of the biggest benefits of cinnamon is it actually helps in killing off dangerous microbes. Now listen, there's a story in the Bible where there's a plague going throughout the Israelite camp and God tells Moses and Aaron, Aaron is Moses' brother, the priest at the time, he said, I want you to diffuse oils throughout the camp and actually one of the oils they had during the time was called the holy anointing oil. That was a blend of five oils. It was a blend of cinnamon, cassia, calamus, myrrh, 
as well as olive oil, and they would put it in like a glass jar, and they would actually anoint the head of kings with it. But there was also, but what, one of the things they did when this whole camp was sick with a plague, they actually fumigated it with cinnamon oil, and it said it killed off the plague. When people were sick in biblical days, they would uh, anoint their head with, um, in the Bible it says, if you're sick, go to the priest or the elder, have them pray for you with, for healing, and have them anoint your head with oil. Well, cinnamon oil was one of those oils in that holy anointing oil blend that's still used by certain churches uh, around the world today. So cinnamon oil has antibacterial properties. It's been shown to help fight infections as well. Cinnamon, uh, also it's very warming. So especially if somebody is sick with a cold or flu or has shivers and is cold and you need to warm their insides, cinnamon oil is fantastic. Uh, it, it's a fantastic oil to use. Number three is thyme essential oil. And thyme is very high in a couple compounds. Number one, it's very high in thymol or thymol. Uh, and certain species of thyme also has some of what makes oregano beneficial as an antibiotic, and that's carvercol. But again, larger amounts of thymol. And this is really, really effective, especially when, with bronchial issues, bronchial infections, um, bronchitis, pneumonia, um, sinusitis. Um, thyme is also unique that, in that it's a pro-progesterone. It's even been shown to help balance out hormones and strengthen the kidneys. In Chinese medicine, it's known to help strengthen the kidney chi and overall energy. But thyme uh, has very, very strong antimicrobial properties there as well and is supposed to help support circulation in the body, especially of the lungs within Chinese medicine. So if you have an infection or again, or, or an issue, especially related to the lungs or sinuses or breathing, time is one of the best, uh, it's the best time to use time. Did you get that? I thought that was pretty funny. So, all right, number four here, tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is also known as melaleuca, okay? Melaleuca and tea tree oil. Uh, tea tree oil is very high in something called terpenine as well as thymine. So terpenines and thymine is what you're gonna find in tea tree oil. Now this is a plant that's typically found in Australia, okay? So it's found in Australia today, and this was used by Aborigines. They would actually take it and turn it into a paste. And when people had flesh wounds during war, different types of infections or, uh, or injuries, they use this directly on the skin to fight infections. So again, if you have a cut or a scrape or a burn or a w an open wound, tea tree oil, one of the best, probably maybe the best on this list at treating the skin directly to treat any type of wound or infection and using it as a natural antibiotic. This is one I don't want to recommend internally. And I want to say this, many of these oils are used internally. You want to be careful with these oils that are powerful antibiotics. Typically, um, people that have GI issues, like an inflammatory bowel issue, um, Typically, or very young children, you would not want to use these oils internally, probably pregnancy as well. So again, and always consult with your physician before using any type of these oils internally. But if somebody has a pretty robust system and they just really get run down or they definitely get a strong infection, you know, anywhere between three to 14 days, you could take these oils internally with food, okay? You typically, if you're gonna do a cinnamon oil, you know, a, 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 you know two to three drops, three times a day in food uh, is how you'd wanna take those. But again, always consult with your physician or a healthcare practitioner if you are gonna do these internally. Tea tree oil is one you don't wanna do internally at all. Um, because of the nature of some of the compounds within tea tree oil. Some other powerful oils when it comes to infections, eucalyptus oil can be very, very powerful, especially for fighting uh, pneumonia, different types of bacteria as well. Ginger oil, if somebody has a cold or flu, is very powerful at warming the body. Clove oil has many of the same benefits. It's high in cinnamaldehyde as is cinnamon, but this is another oil that especially has anti-parasitic benefits. If somebody's looking to fight a parasite, Clove oil tends to be very, very powerful as well. And then surprisingly, lavender oil. Lavender oil has been shown to help different things, such as types of candida or the different species of bacteria that can cause acne. Um, it can cause that. And let me say this in terms of infections as well or bad bacteria. Tea tree oil mixed with honey is ideal for fighting acne. So tea tree oil, 
mixed with raw honey or manuka honey, putting it on for two minutes, washing it off, a great natural acne treatment. So as you can see, essential oils really are nature's antibiotic. And hey, if you have an essential oil you love or you've used as a natural antibiotic, hey, post it right now here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. I'd love to hear from you. And if I missed an essential oil, which there are many I know I missed, but if there's specific essential oils you've used for their antibacterial properties, hey, post that on Facebook Live now and YouTube Live. I'd love to see which essential oils you're using most on a regular basis to fight infection. I wanna say this, hey, if somebody is chronically ill or has a very serious life-threatening infection, these are not replacements for prescription antibiotics. But, so again, I wanna preframe and say that and say use these responsibly. But remember, oftentimes too many people are just running and getting antibiotics and they're being prescribed like candy and think for things like viruses, when in fact antibiotics, synthetics don't fight viruses versus these essential oils, many of them have antiviral, antiparasitic, anti-yeast, antibacterial properties and are very effective. And again, what people have used for thousands of years for fighting bacteria, bad bacteria or pathogenic bacteria, because we know, hey, there is some good bacteria like probiotics that line our gut wall. So guys, this has been me, Dr. Josh X, talking about the best essential oils used as antibiotics. Hi, Dr. Axter, I wanna say thanks so much for checking out this YouTube video, and also don't forget to subscribe if you wanna get more great content on things like herbs, essential oils, natural remedies, and how to use food as medicine. Also, check out more of our content on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.